Okay, we'll be ready to go uh, in about one minute at 4.30, everyone. Okay, I think we'll start the meeting. So with that, um, I'd like to call to order the December uh, 14th special meeting of the Santa Rosa Planning Commission. And I'd like to read the following statement. Due to the provisions of the government, uh, governor's executive orders N-25-20 and N-29-20, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The planning commissioners will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Commissioners and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item four public comment or during our public hearing items today. I'm sorry, we don't have public comment uh, portion. So anybody who'd like to speak during our public hearing items will be able to do so by raising their hand and will be given the ability to address the commission. So with that, um, could we please have roll call? Let the record reflect that all commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioner Duggan, Commissioner Holton, and Commissioner O'Krupke. Thank you. So that will go on to item 2.1, statement of purpose. <clears throat> the planning commission is charged with carrying out California planning and zoning laws in the city of Santa Rosa. Duties include implementing of plans, ordinances, and policies relating to land use matters, assisting in writing and implementing the general plan and area plans, holding public meetings and acting on proposed changes to the zoning code, zoning map, general plan, tentative subdivision maps, and undertaking special planning studies as needed. So with that, um, we'll move on to item three, statement of abstentions. Are there any abstentions on the two items tonight? Okay, good, uh, seeing none. Um, we'll move on to item four, um, which is our first a scheduled item is item 4.1, it's a public hearing, KBH Group, LLC, it's a secret exempt project, conditional use permit, 3043 Wilgen Court, CUP 22-029, it is an ex parte item, so we'll go ahead and start with Commissioner Carter. I have nothing to disclose on this item. Thank you. Commissioner Sisco. I have nothing to disclose on the item either. Vice Chair Peterson. I also have nothing to disclose. And I visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. So with that, we'll move on to Project Planner Shukali. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Good afternoon, members of the Planning Commission. I will start my presentation by starting to share my screen. Okay. So as you mentioned, this is a conditional use permit for KBH Group LLC located at Bulgen Court. The applicant is proposing to operate a commercial cannabis cultivation type 3A facility within an existing 19,627 square foot industrial building Hours of operation would be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the image below shows the vacant building that is proposed to be used for this project. And here is a neighborhood context map. 
the project site is located in the southwest quadrant. The site is zoned light industrial, consistent with the general plan land use designation, and is located in an area primarily developed with industrial uses and auto dealerships. The northern parcel is currently um, operates with various cannabis uses, including manufacturing and distribution. And the southern parcel has been approved recently for another cultivation use, which is similar to this project. It was similar to this project, actually, it was approved. And here is a brief summary of the project history. The neighborhood meeting was held in April of this year, and no one from the public attended the meeting. The application was submitted in June, and in July of this year, the application was deemed complete. And here is the site for the existing building. The minimum number of the parking spaces for the proposed project is 20, and the project site provides 39 parking spaces, including one ADA space and three bicycle parking spaces. And here is the floor plan. The existing building footprint is 19,627 square feet and will consist of nine grow rooms, a mother room, a flower room, loading room and a dry room, and an office and security, and some other rooms. Also, the applicant is proposing to add a 12,166 square foot second tier rack within the shell of the building. The second tier rack would include nine flower rooms and one mother room. Here on the top, you can see the cross section of the building that shows the proposed cultivation facility with movable racks that I mentioned they will add another on top. And below are two pictures of the existing vacant building as it stands today. No exterior changes are being proposed to the building at this time, and the building will be upgraded where necessary to meet ADA compliance and site improvements will include ADA compliance parking lot and restriping existing parking spaces. And as you may know, there are some general operational requirements for commercial cannabis facilities, including odor mitigation plan, security plan, lighting, noise, and transportation, and delivery plan. So the applicant has provided a certified odor mitigation plan that shows compliance with the city's cannabis other standards and also a detailed security plan has been provided that explains the operation of security cameras and alarm systems for the site. The applicant has also indicated that no new lights will be added to the existing exterior uh, lighting system that currently the site has and all operation work will be inside the building, including the transportation of cannabis which will take place within an enclosed, enclosed area with a roll-up door. And the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, and staff has determined that the project qualifies for two categorical exemptions, Class 1 and Class 32. Staff did not receive any public comments or questions also regarding the proposed project. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Planning Commission, by resolution, approve a conditional use permit to allow 19,627 square feet of commercial cannabis cultivation for the property located at 3043 Volgen Court. And um, that was my presentation, and I'm available to answer question. The applicant is James Lee, and he might have a brief verbal presentation tonight. If you don't have any question, that was my staff presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions for the planner on this item? Okay, uh, so Mr. Lee, do you have uh, comments you'd like to make to us before we open the public hearing on this? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, sorry. I have no comments, but uh, I've worked with 
several cities and our planner has been, he's been tremendously helpful in helping through this process. So I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions for the applicant at this time? Okay, then uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so, and your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown time. Do we have any hands raised at this moment? I do not see any. Yes, I do not see any either. Okay. So with that, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Um, there's one item, or excuse me, one resolution on this item. So if someone would like to move that resolution, um, we can uh, thank you, Commissioner Cisco. Yeah, I'll move a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa making findings and determinations and approving a conditional use permit for a commercial cannabis cultivation type 3A use within the 19,627 square foot existing building located at 3043 Wilgin Court, APN 043-220-005 file number CUP22-029 and wait for the reading of the text. Thank you. And is there a second? Oh, Vice Chair Peterson, second. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll second. Thank you. Okay. Is that where you're raising your hand? <laughs> I uh, was, but I didn't know if you were going to uh, get oh. Commissioner Carr. <laughs> uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and start with comments with Commissioner Carter. Uh, once again, a pretty straightforward package. Um, as uh, Planner Sakali has said, we've approved similar operations very near this, so I don't have any comments or questions, and I think I can make the findings necessary to approve the resolution. Thank you. And Commissioner Sisko. Uh, yes, I also can make the findings. It's again, it's another complete package. Um, we're getting pretty used to seeing very <laughs> complete packages so no issues no questions and i can make the finding thank you vice chair peterson um i can also make all the required findings and as an aside i'm glad to hear that uh, our planner was living up to her sterling reputation great and um i also can make all the required findings and um i really have nothing further to say uh, it's a complete package. It's a good location for it. And thank you, Mr. Kali. Um, so with that, if we could go ahead and call for the vote. Commissioner Carter. Aye. Commissioner Sisko. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson. Aye. Chair Weeks. Aye. So that passes with four ayes, three um, absences. Um, Commissioner Holton. Commissioner Duggan, and I'm not sure how to uh, categorize now um, Council Member Okrepke. <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, we'll move on. Oh, actually, let me read the, uh, the statement about an appeal. Uh, please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed within 10 calendar days of today's action. The time limit will extend to the following business day if the last day falls on a day that the city is closed. For more information on how to submit an appeal form, please contact a project planner. So with that, we'll move on to item 4.2, another public hearing, Stone Bridge Duet Homes, the negative declaration previously adopted at 6611 Stone Bridge Road, PRJ 21-022. This is an ex parte item, so we'll go ahead and start with Commissioner Carter. I have visited the site and I have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Cisco. I visited the site. Um, I also had uh, a conversation uh, with Peter Stanley of Archaeologics um, because my understanding was that Archaeologic had been meeting with a number of Oakmont citizens 
uh, looking at the uh, commercial site, uh, kind of looking for um, some changes for the general plan update, an interest in developing a nice commercial core with mixed use housing. So I wanted to hear more about that from Mr. Stanley and was able to get that information. And with that, I have nothing else to disclose. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, I visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. And I also visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. So with that, uh, we will go ahead uh, with uh, Planner Wixon on this. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Chair Weeks. Uh, my name is Mike Wixon. I'm a contract planner with the city of Santa Rosa. And uh, this is my item. So without further ado, I'll jump into the PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> and the project before you is referred to as the Stonebridge Duet Homes. It's a tentative map and a conditional use permit. It also consists of a design review permit, but that will be considered uh, later after following this hearing uh, by the design review board. Uh, and so if we can go to the next slide, please. Project is located at Stonebridge Road 6611, Stonebridge Road to be precise at the, at the north corner, but also you might consider it the northeast corner of uh, the intersection of Stonebridge Road and Oakmont Drive. And you can see the land uses around it with this slide that uh, to the east and northeast, there are existing homes. Uh, and those are detached single family homes, small lot. And then to the north is an existing auto repair use. Further west on Oakmont Drive are also attached single family homes. Uh, and then to the south, <clears throat> excuse me, to the south uh, at the intersection of Stonebridge and Oakmont, uh, some existing commercial uses that are uh, service commercial uses to the area. And then there's a, an empty uh, lot, actually two empty lots to the south, southeast of the project site across Stonebridge Road. Okay, if you can go to the next slide, please. And this is the general plan land use designation, the yellow being low density residential, obviously predominant in this area. And then there's some commercial land uses in the red, service commercial, and that's uh, actually designated retail and business services. And uh, then there are also some uh, retail medium density residential land uses, which are the striped um, kind of an ochre color um, to the north and south, and then also a little bit to the east. The, the ochre colors to the east, which is the medium density residential. So that gives you an idea of the land uses in the area and for the project site. Again, the project site is retail and business services uses. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, please. The zoning classification for the site is uh, general commercial and it's resilient city. There's also a small sliver of the site that has a, uh, an R1 single family residential um, assignment. And that's, uh, I'll, I'll point that out as we get into the, <clears throat> excuse me, as we get into the uh, project slide showing the layout of the project site. But basically that small sliver of zoning that's R1 is in the backyards of what are proposed as lots five and six. And so there's no actual construction occurring within that zoned area. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, the site you can see uh, with the star there uh, is located outside of the wildland urban interface area. So it's uh, for building code purposes, there's no special construction standards that are required having been located or designated within a wildland uh, urban interface area. You go to the next slide, please. And then this slide just indicates that the project site is outside of a high fire severity zone, uh, according to the maps that are maintained by Cal Fire. And you can see the kind of the gray area in between, sandwiched in between the orange and the yellow. Um, obviously you can see the project site, but that gray area are areas within the city that are outside also of the high fire severity zone that are in the Oakmont Village area. 
If you can go to the next slide, please. The project site was part of an earlier subdivision uh, back in about 2014, <clears throat> which was actually approved back in 2008 or so. And uh, you can see with the star uh, on the kind of the lower left corner there of the uh, subdivision, it was part of the meadows at Oakmont subdivision. That star indicates the project or the lot that was created that is now the subject of this uh, project for the duets uh, at Oakmont. And so you, I wanted to make sure that you could see that this was part of a larger project at the time. There was a mitigated negative declaration and initial study prepared for this project at the time as well and adopted by the Planning Commission. And I'll explain that a little bit more in detail. But if we can go to the uh, next slide, please. This is just an aerial image that, again, the yellow uh, shows the area that was part of the Oakmont, uh, I'm sorry, the Meadows at Oakmont subdivision at the time. And with the aerial photo, you can see how, this, how the area or this project has developed since the map was recorded. This site is currently vacant. And then the site across the street to the south, there are two lots there actually, those are also uh, vacant at this time. If you go to the next slide, please. So on May 16th, I uh, just wanted to back up a second here. I wanted to give a little project history to the overall site here uh, and how we've come to the where we're at today. Uh, May 16th, 2006, the City Council approved a negative declaration and the General Plan Amendment, a rezone for the project, uh, what was referred to as the Meadows, and that was that subdivision that I had shown you earlier. And um, that then created the current general plan land use and the current zoning that you have on the project site at this time. Uh, on January 10th, 2008, the Planning Commission then approved a mitigated negative declaration and a tentative map uh, and conditional use permit for the project referred to as the Meadows at Oakmont. And again, that created the 36 single family lots, that created one multifamily lot and then also two commercial lots, of which one of those is this current project site. Uh, in January 20, uh, 2021, there was a pre-application meeting held with staff and the applicant to review the current project you're looking at. Uh, on January 26, 2021, there was a neighborhood meeting held for the project. There were no comments provided at the neighborhood meeting, uh, although a later letter was received from the Oakmont Village Association, which is attached to your report, and it gives their nod to the project. Um, on October 31st, 2021, the applications were then accepted as complete for the current project. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry, the applications were submitted on October 31st, and then the applications uh, uh, were complete on September 30th, 2022. And so that brings us to today. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. And here's uh, the layout of the project itself, uh, north at the top of the page, south at the bottom of the page. And uh, you can see the project is creating a total of six units, six lots. The units are uh, two, there's, uh, there are three buildings and each of those three buildings has a duet uh, setup or arrangement within each building. And uh, because each building will then be subdivided uh, for later sale, these are referred to as duet homes. Again, it's essentially six units, six lots. The attached housing is part of the project description in that the uh, duets are attached to each other. The project site will be accessed by a driveway off of Stonebridge Road. That driveway is about 20 feet wide. That's also the primary location for all the utilities that will be providing services to the buildings themselves or the homes. You can see that the landscaping uh, is being proposed also around the project site, the, uh, the perimeter of the road frontages. Um, the road frontages will maintain the existing landscaping that is there, plus add a little bit more to it. Um, that landscaping is consistent with uh, other projects up and down Oakmont uh, as well, and also with uh, projects along Stonebridge. If you can go to the next slide, please. 
Here are the floor plans for each of the, uh, the uh, duet buildings. There are essentially two floor plans. The homes themselves or the units are essentially about 1,670 square feet, uh, give or take, depending on which unit you, you might be looking at. Um, they will be one car garage. There will be three bedroom units with two, two baths. And uh, the parking will be provided within the garage, one space within each garage, one, one tandem space behind each garage in the driveway. And then there will be additional parking on street. Uh, I believe it's a total of seven parking spaces on street as well. So the parking that is being provided meets all the requirements for uh, the, the necessary parking spaces for the zoning code purposes. So if you can go to the next slide, please. And then this is just a uh, elevation of the buildings. Again, the design review board will be looking specifically at the design of the buildings themselves, but I just wanted to give the commission a feel for what, what it is the project is and how it's being proposed at this point. It's essentially one story. Again, it's three bedroom, two bath, one car garage with the tandem parking on site. And uh, the, the buildings themselves will also have a small little front porch out in front it's very similar to a lot of the uh, small lot projects that have also been approved by the city throughout the city. Um, this is actually, there's actually a, a quick evaluation of the project against the small lot development standards that are included in the, so the zoning code. However, this project need not meet all the requirements or actually any of the requirements of the small lot uh, design standards but it's a good benchmark for the commission to have and for the public to have just as a way to understand what the project is providing and what they're doing and the similarities between this project and other small lot projects that are in the city. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide, please. And here's just the roof plan. Again, it's a single family or uh, one story uh, project that meets the height limits of the uh, zoning code as well. Going on to the next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there was a mitigated negative declaration adopted for the Meadows project. And within that negative declaration, there were mitigation measures for archeology, span for noise and toxic hazards. Uh, all of those uh, mitigation measures were applied in the previous project and they will be continued over as well to this project as conditions of approval. So you'll find that those are included in the conditions uh, for this particular project. Staff is recommending that the Planning Commission find this project exempt from CEQA for any further study. So uh, there are three different classifications or uh, categories that we are recommending the Commission find this exempt uh, as a project. First is uh, as an infill exemption for a class 32 project. Uh, the next one, if you can go to the next slide, please. The next uh, type is a CEQA guidelines 15183. And basically it's saying that the project is consistent with the development density established by the existing zoning, the community plan and the general policies for which an EIR was certified. Since there was an EIR certified for the general plan, uh, this project also fits into this category of an exemption. And then uh, finally, the last exemption category that we're recommending is as a class 32, um, it's in section 15332, projects less than five acres. It's consistent with the zoning and general plan, substantially surrounded by urban uses. Site is not a habitat for rare, endangered, or protected species. There's no significant effects from the project uh, for water and air quality, and all utilities are available to the project site. And if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is the conclusion, but I wanted to just step back for a second, just to indicate that the project is consistent with all the zoning code requirements for the general commercial zone. Uh, it meets all the setback requirements, all the lot coverage requirements, um, all the height, building height requirements, so, uh, and, and all the parking requirements. So the project is consistent as it's been proposed with the zoning code. The zoning code requires a conditional use permit for attached single family housing in this particular uh, zoning category. 
Uh, the applicant submitted that. The findings for the conditional use permit that are necessary have been presented in the staff report. Staff uh, has recommended approval of the project in the way that the, the conditional use permit findings can all be made affirmatively. Uh, the project does not present any kind of an issue with staff. So we are recommending approval of the conditional use permit as a use um, with six units on 0.75 acres at a density of eight, basically it's a density of eight units per acre, which is very similar to other small lot developments in this area and then also throughout the city. Uh, then secondly, the, the project includes the tentative map and we've also included the findings necessary for the tentative map in the um, staff report. And uh, again, uh, staff is recommending that the commission approve the tentative subdivision map. All the, all the um, findings can be made affirmatively. Again, the project's consistent with the zoning code. It's consistent with the general plan as well, that the, uh, the service commercial land use actually has a policy in it that discusses or mentions specifically um, that attached single family housing should be considered in this particular land use. So with that, uh, that, that wraps up the presentation that I had. I saw that the applicants were online uh, and available to answer questions as well. So I, I saw that they're in the audience. And if you have any particular questions of me, um, I'm here to answer those. So that wraps up my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of Planner Whitson, uh, Commissioner Cisco? I actually have quite a few for Mr. Whitson. Would you like me to ask them now or wait until after the public hearing? Um, why don't we wait until after the public hearing? Um, and in the meantime, um, are there does the app, Mr. Wixon, does the applicant have a presentation or is he or she just available to answer questions? They do not have a presentation. They're available to answer questions. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do the public hearing. And then if there are questions um, as well as for the applicant at that time, we, we can um, do that if that's okay with folks. So with that, um, I will uh, now open the public hearing on this item. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine. To raise your hand, each speaker will, has, will have three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so, and your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. So with that, I do not see any hands raised. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, uh, we do have a hand raised from a caller. Caller 1335, I'm going to give you permissions to speak. You can press star six to unmute yourself and please state your name for the record. Caller 1335, I just sent you a prompt to unmute yourself. Please press star six. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. The, yes, uh, this is Peter Schmidt. I'm the president of the Homeowners Association for the Meadows at Oakmont, which is the subdivision or development that is just immediately adjacent to uh, this project. Um, I recall participating in a uh, a conference like this uh, about a year and a half ago where the subject of drainage from this lot came up. I'm curious as to how the uh, developer has uh, addressed that issue um, and um, and also if there uh, if it can be disclosed during this meeting any uh, time frames for uh, for beginning the project. Um, I think those are the only questions I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if, are there any other uh, members of the public who'd like to make comments? Chair Weeks, I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll go ahead and um, close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. And um, before we start with the questions from the commission, um, 
let's uh, cover the questions that um, the caller asked. Uh, so drainage and timelines. Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, the timelines, I, I believe the applicant is anxious to get going if uh, I'm, they're here, so I think they could answer that directly if you wanted to ask them that directly. Um, but they're as anxious to get going uh, as anybody. So I think they're looking at um, trying to get the improvement plans approved and then on to the building permits and uh, things going by spring. As far as uh, the drainage on the site, there are multiple small basins that are uh, shown on the landscape plan. And if we can pull up the, the PowerPoint again, and go to the site plan. Hey, uh, hey, Mike and commissioners, this is Tim Massey. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, excellent. Okay. Uh, so I also, and my name is Tim Massey, Ple pleasure to meet everyone uh, of the Africa. And also on the phone, uh, we have uh, Dustin and our, our civil consultants who are very knowledgeable about how, how the drainage would work. So if you could allow them in, I'm sure they would uh, tell you all you, all you want to know about drainage. Well, let's see if we can get Mr. Wixon to address that question. And if we still have more questions on it, we can um, refer to them, okay? Yep. So it would be uh, slide 10, um, and it's part of the project description. Basically, you can see the tentative map and site plan and the landscaping. And in front of lot four, behind lot four, behind, I believe, also lot three, uh, and then also, I believe on uh, lot six and um, I think lot two as well, there are small little basins that are uh, proposed on the, on the project site to collect the stormwater runoff. The project has also submitted a hydrology and hydraulic study that's been reviewed by the Engineering uh, Development Services Division and uh, it's been accepted by them at this point, so there do not appear to be any issues related to the numbers they were using and how they were planning to address the runoff uh, and drainage for the site. There is existing drainage uh, connections through the site as well or into the site proposed. So there's existing lines running along Oakmont and Stonebridge, I believe, that will have to be used to uh, connect up for drainage. Uh, I know that the engineer is a lot more familiar with the, the specifics of the drainage as well. So there may be other specific items that they, they may wish to address. Thank you. Um, I think what I'll do now is have questions from the commission because we'll, we might end up having to go back to the applicant and the engineer at that point and ask more questions. So, so with that, um, Commissioner Cisco, you had a variety of questions. I do, um, and I think these are mostly for Mr. Wixon. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wixon, did you consider um, handling this via a general plan amendment and rezoning? And if you didn't, why not? So no, uh, the zoning currently allows for attached multifamily housing, or I'm sorry, single family housing. So it's very clear in the zoning code in table, I think it's table two six. There's a table there that lists the uses that are permitted and permitted by right as well as by use permit. So attached single family housing is permitted by conditional use permit. So there's really no need for rezoning at that point. And then you look at the general plan and, the, and let me step back. The zoning code allows up to 30, uh, 30 units per acre uh, for attached and multifamily housing according to the development standards. So then if you look to the general plan, the general plan actually has a policy statement uh, written in it that encourages the development of attached and multifamily housing in the services commercial uh, general plan land use category. So that also fits the land use category that's proposed here. So you see a policy encouraging it in the general plan as well as we know that it's housing and, and that the city is trying to find places for housing uh, as much as they can and that it's been declared as an emergency statewide for trying to provide additional housing. And then you also see it in the zoning code that it's permitted by a conditional use permit. And so with those 
both in place, there was really no need for a general plan amendment or a zone code amendment. Okay, um, well, this project completely takes over a whole site of um, general commercial retail and services. And I guess my interpretation of all of the policies that you just um, gave us would be that those would be allowed by conditional use permit, but we would be coming in with a larger project that actually was a commercial project. So that that's not your take on those policies? No, I didn't see anything, uh, nor am I aware of any policies in the general plan or in the zoning code that would require like, a, a, say, a mixed use development or a higher density or intensity to be proposed. So the, it's a maximum density in the zoning code, not not a required minimum density. And if, if I could, um, uh, Chair Weeks and Commissioner Cisco, I might um, be able to help a little bit. Uh, Jessica Jones, um, Deputy Director of Planning. Uh, so uh, we do, at the uh, as Mike, or uh, Planner Wixson stated, um, the general plan does have a policy that allows residential development in the retail and business services designation and does not require um, it to be a mixed use um, type of development. Um, residential on its own is allowed um, and also with the zoning um, the same way. We do have a, um, a star that we have on our general plan land use diagram that identifies locations in the city where um, community and neighborhood centers um, are anticipated to be located. Um, and with those, in those areas, um, we have um, uh, interpreted in the past that land does need to be set aside, ensured to be set aside for um, commercial space. So, you know, if we've got a uh, an area of land that is designated retail and business services and we've got um, residential uses that want to come in, um, we have, uh, the city has approved those in the past, um, but with leaving um, at least enough area to be uh, developed in the future with that um, commercial center um, that's required by the general plan. In this instance, there is not that star there. Um, so uh, staff's interpretation is that, you know, retail is not required to be there. Uh, certainly, obviously, is allowed in that retail and business services section, um, but as is residential, um, and it is, is not required to be mixed use. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, it, it does. It also sort of leads into my next question. Um, I think most of us were on this commission. This was, I don't know, a year or two ago where actually that's exactly what we were looking at in Kiwanis Springs was removing uh, the community shopping center. And a great deal of analysis was provided. It was a general plan amendment that that particular area was not going to be um, able to be developed for a community shopping center and that there were sufficient areas around it. So what I'm hearing you say is that kind of analysis would only apply to those start areas and an analysis here of what's the actual impact of um, eliminating any possibility of a retail or, or commercial services on this particular site would not be required. So that is correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and this is not an affordable project, correct? Correct. Okay. And then um, last but not least, <laughs> Um, this is a project, the way it's designed, it backs onto Oakmont Drive. It's a back on treatment into the entryway of Oakmont uh, itself. And I understand that the Design Review Board is going to be looking at this after our approval. If we approve this tentative map with the way that it's laid out with the back on treatment, Design Review will have no opportunity to make adjustments or make some sort of statement as to whether or not that actually fits with our design guidelines. Is that correct? They're just going to be looking at the architecture. That's my understanding, yes. Yes, that is correct. With the approval of the conditional use permit um, and the tentative map, we're you know setting in the, the site plan itself. 
Um, so the what the design review board will be looking at is the the architecture, as you mentioned, and the landscaping. Okay, all I got. Okay, um, I I see the applicant has their hand raised. Maybe they can address uh, also some of the questions. Or Hi, uh, my name is Dustin Maxim. Uh, I'm a project manager with Civil Design, and I've been working closely with the applicant. Uh, I just wanted to address a few of the items mentioned, and that is um, that we've done quite a bit of outreach with the neighbors, and they've all been supportive of the project. They were supportive during the neighborhood meeting as well. Uh, the Oakmont Village Association reviewed and approved the project, and uh, at the time they were fully supportive of it. We've also done a uh, design review with the Oakmont Village Architectural Committee, um, placement of the homes, uh, the porch styles, the colors and the landscaping were all um, discussed in detail with them. Uh, originally, uh, the project was going to go to zoning administrator for design review, but that is uh, since changed because we're a hair over on the square footage. So that's why we were doing a follow-up design review in January. Um, let's see. So as for the, the back on landscaping, I would say uh, that the intent there is to continue um, what has been done further to the north on Oakmont Drive. Um, some of that landscaping was installed with the prior subdivision and so we're going to uh, keep the trees where we can and supplement the rest uh try trying to uh continue that look and improve it where we can so i uh, just want to kind of add that to the conversation as we're talking about this thank you um are there any other questions from the commissioner from the commission of either the applicant or staff Okay, then seeing none, um, as previously mentioned, this has two resolutions. If somebody could move the first resolution. Commissioner uh, Carter had his hand raised, I think, oh, for a question. Sorry. Thank you. I, I didn't see that. Thank you, sorry. Commissioner Cisco. Uh, just a follow on question to Commissioner Cisco. So, with the use permit, and well, I suppose if the zoning remains commercial, could the property, in theory, be redeveloped in the future for commercial? but I imagine that subdivision map might preclude that action somehow. Just thinking down the road. So, uh, yes, I mean, it, uh, if the site is subdivided and developed, could it be demolished and, you know, lots merged and created something different if the site remains retail and business services? Uh, I suppose the answer is yes, you know. Uh, you know, it, once it's constructed, um, you know, it'll probably be some time before we would see a, a uh, you know, redevelopment of that site. Um, but as long as the site remains commercial, the commercial uses would be allowed. Okay, um, any other questions? Sure, Weeks, I, if I could, I just wanted to point it out uh, also that there are two revised resolutions that were set out or attached. And I just wanna be sure that you saw those. Thank you, yes, I believe those were sent to us uh, earlier today. So um, the two, so uh, would somebody like to read the first resolution, the first revised resolution? Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Um, I'd like to move the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa making findings and determinations and approving a conditional use permit for the Stonebridge Duet Homes, a six unit attached single family residential subdivision located at 6611 Stonebridge Road, APN 016-860-037, file number PRJ21-022 and wait for the reading. Thank you. And is there a second? Commissioner Carter. So that was moved by Vice Chair Peterson, seconded by Commissioner Carter. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the project as a whole. And we'll start with Commissioner Carter. Yes, uh, you know, it seems pretty apparent that the uh, the project uh, use uh, for re 
retail is uh, fairly desirable here, and they seem to have made the necessary um, preparations to allow that use through the use permit, and I, I think I can make the necessary findings for both the use permit and the um, subdivision map, uh, and we'll be supporting the project. Thank you. And Commissioner Sisko? Um, well, I apologize in advance if I'm going to be a little long on this. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give a little backdrop uh, to how I began to think about this. Um, last week, we were looking at the, the project at Skyhawk, and notwithstanding anything that happened with the actual project in front of us, noting that the general plan uh, of uh, residential overlay zoning of general commercial, uh, not consistent. Um, one of the reasons why I went back and looked at our 2005 minutes, because I, because I was there, I wanted to see if we'd had some sort of a discussion about just that, um, the awkwardness of that method. And we didn't. Uh, that I could see in the in the notes, but um, you know, after our meeting, I was giving a lot of thought to that, and and again, taking into consideration Vice Chair Peterson's comments about sort of the tension of definitions uh, that are in the general plan, the expectations that come from the community, um, and just the awkwardness of having um, a land use and uh, uh, zoning that are inconsistent. So I just sort of made a promise to myself that I was going to really pay attention to that in the future. If I hadn't in 2005, that I was going to really pay attention to that. And then um, thus comes this project, which is, you know, an underlying land use and zoning uh, that are uh, retail and are taking over the entire site with housing. Um, and, I, and I get that, you know, the, the 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 city is saying that that is consistent with our policies and our general plan. It's just very troubling to me um, that there isn't some. And I get that it's not required that there isn't some analysis happening here as to what we might be giving up in the future in order to to put in this housing. Um, you know, and maybe the analysis is it isn't really necessary because no one's come forward with a development project for a commercial there. But um, it just it just troubles me that um, that if those policies exist and that's the interpretation, that isn't necessarily the interpretation I would get. I would I would think that um, housing would come in with a greater project if it's going to take over the entire site. And in, in this case, it is. Um, I think, you know, we all want housing, and I think that's the, the tension that, I, that I'm feeling is, okay, do, because we have this need for housing, do I just sort of forget all of this uh, awkwardness, what happens 20 years down the road when, you know, again, perhaps somebody comes in and goes, this would be a great place to do a downtown little core for Oakmont or whatever the proposal would be, and it's built out with housing which you know we've all seen you don't take out housing once it's in so um i'm just troubled by this method not having enough analysis even though it's not required I, apparently um and again if it was a really great project um i might not be feeling this way but um i'm also troubled by the project itself that uh it's basically six units of market rate housing um and it's backing on, just do a back on treatment to Oakmont Drive, which is the entrance to Oakmont. And I, I don't think that's in keeping with our design guidelines or our, our desired um, uh, design guidelines. So um, I'm troubled about locking that in. And um, so for all those reasons, I'm going to uh, not be able to make the findings for this project and I'll be voting now. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Um, I think 
uh, Commissioner Cisco has raised a lot of, uh, you know, interesting, sometimes challenging points. Uh, for me, uh, the way I can sort of square this, the circle of, of the tension that she raised between these, these different elements of, of uh, city planning process, um, you know, looking at the site, there is still space for commercial. You know, this isn't a complete removal um, of that option at, at the entrance to uh, this neighborhood. Um, and also there's there's no neighborhood opposition. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, a key distinction, which is that the different parts of the, the planning, the general plan, the zoning, I think needs to maintain um, a level of flexibility to to meet city and neighborhood needs. I heard uh, an explanation from city staff that I, I think was persuasive to me as to how they interpret this. Um, and if the neighborhood is okay with it, um, we've still got design review for maybe not the layout of the, the tentative map itself, but you know, um, improvement if necessary to the entrance to, to Oakmont is still there. Uh, so if there's a commercial need, um, there's still a lot there uh, and the neighborhood seems okay with it. So if those two is, is kind of a way to resolve the tension for me, um, I can make all the required findings uh, for the initial use permit and uh, the tentative map. Uh, thank you. Um, so I am going to be supporting the project um, and I can make the required findings, but I do have a couple comments. Um, I would have liked to have seen higher density on the site um, if that would have been possible. Um, and also uh, with respect to the commercial, there is a, a commercial site that's kitty corner to this project. Um, that I know it's been part of some of the discussion of Oakmont 2040 or 2050, whatever they, they're calling it. Um, uh, so there is still possibility for commercial um, in that area. Uh, and I think one of the things um, I'd like maybe for staff to take away from this is that even if studies aren't required, it might be a good idea to do them or analysis. Um, uh, you know, it would help us as a commission uh, to formulate our decisions. So um, anyway, so with that, um, that was moved by Vice Chair Peterson and seconded by Commissioner Carter. Uh, could we call for the vote, please? Commissioner Carter? Yes. Uh, yes, I. Commissioner Cisco? No. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. Chair Weeks? Aye. So that motion fails, uh, I believe, um, because we don't have a, no, we have a quorum, but it's, never mind, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. That motion passes. That motion passes, sorry. Um, I was, anyway, I don't know what I was thinking. So um, it uh, passes with, three eyes, one no, and three um, absences. So sorry about that. So then we have the second um, resolution uh, for the tentative map. Um, did somebody like to enter that? Commissioner Peterson. Um, I'd like to move the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa approving a tentative map for the Stonebridge due at home subdivision to subdivide a 0 0.75 acre parcel into six lots located at 6611 Stonebridge Road, APN 016-860-037, file number PRJ21-022, and wait for the reading. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Carter, okay, so that was moved by Vice Chair Peterson, seconded by Commissioner Carter. Um, we could have the vote.
Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, Commissioner Carter? Aye. Commissioner Cisco? No. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. And Chair Weeks? Aye. So that passes with three ayes, one no, and three absences. Um, and please. Um, could somebody mute themselves, please? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, could you please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed within 10 calendar days of today's action. The time limit will extend to the following business day if the last day falls on a day that the city is closed. And for more information on how to submit an appeal form, please contact the project planner. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting of the Planning Commission. And we will see you all in 2023.